could convolutions will come to later. Okay. Now, I think you are still not perhaps convinced as to why should I not put t into s minus a equal to u. I think that you are not going to be happy unless you see a concrete example which gives you a wrong answer, correct? Or are you or are you convinced? You want to see a concrete example where you make a complex substitution in a, li in a, in a contour integral in a, uh, and you are going to get a wrong answer. All right, I will give you a, I'll give you a rather convincing answer. Do not write everything please, this is just for you to, this, this, for your records. Let us, let us look at this integral i equal to integral 0 to infinity dy upon 1 plus y to the power 4, put y equal to i x correct? Put y equal to i x, what do you get? i equal to little i integral 0 to infinity d x upon 1 plus x to the power 4, it is little i times capital I. So, capital I is 0, but this result is plainly false since the integrand is positive. By the way, what is the value of the integral i? That I am also, I would like you to compute you have enough machinery at your disposal to calculate this integral i pretty efficiently. How? How are you going to do calculate i? By reducing it to a gamma function. It is going to ultimately you are going to get gamma 1 fourth, gamma 3 fourths and you have to use the reflection formula, correct. So, are you now convinced that making complex substitution in a line integral can lead to disastrous results, not just wrong results, disastrous results. It is not like okay, the answer came out to be correct, but the method is wrong and we are just being very fussy about mathematical correctness. It is not a question of making fuss, it is serious. The reason for getting such a faulty answer is easily given. What is really happening is that we are looking at integrals along the real axis, integral 0 to infinity f t dt and along the imaginary axis. After making a change of variables, the integral goes over the imaginary axis, but then when you parameterize the imaginary axis as t going to i t, correct? So, you are getting i f of i t dt, that is the integral along the imaginary axis with the appropriate parameterization. And we are asserting that the integral along the real axis is equal to the integral along the imaginary axis. Now, let us examine this in the light of Cauchy's theorem. Now, you take the function f of z equal to 1 over 1 plus z to the power 4, right? Along the real axis, you are getting the integral that you want. Along the imaginary axis, you are getting little i times capital I and you are asserting that these two are equal. You are asserting that these two are equal or rather i minus little i times capital I equal to 0. That is what you are trying to say. Of course, contribution along this circular arc will go to 0 as before. So, where is the problem? The problem is you would have gotten the correct answer if this were the case. If it were the case that integral of f z along l 1 plus l 2 plus gamma r were 0, suppose if star were to hold, then I can allow r to go to infinity and the first integral will give you the integral that you want. The second integral will give you that minus little i times capital I, the third one goes to 0. So, you will actually get capital I equal to little i times capital I. But unfortunately, star is wrong. Unfortunately, the equation star is false. Why is it false? Because the contour encloses a simple pole and the residue of the pole is minus i plus 1 upon 4 root 2. So, in place of star, the correct equation is this which is written in red. 
that is the correct equation. And when you allow r to go to infinity, what do you get? We get capital I 0 minus little i times capital I equal to the right hand side. So, capital I into 1 minus little i equal to the right hand side. Now, divide by 1 minus little i and you get the answer capital I. Correct? Well, here it is. If you get the correct result, I into capital I into 1 minus little i is pi by 2 root 2 into 1 minus little i. The 1 minus little i cancels out and you get the correct answer pi by 2 root 2. Exercise verify this result by reducing the integral to a beta function. So, the problem is the contour encloses a pole in the case in this particular case that we are looking at. Question what if the contour does not enclose any poles as in the earlier example that we were looking at? In the example that we were looking at, f of z was what? z to the power k e to the power z, entire function. Contour, there are no poles at all. In this case, that I, in, the, in the counter example that I have given you, there is a pole. So, is it correct to say that if there are no poles, then you will get a correct answer? It is still false. What can go wrong? Suppose again you have a sector, what could have gone wrong? The contribution from the circular arc may not go to 0, no? We have verified that integral over L 1 goes to the integral that you want, integral over L 2 gives you something else and integral over the, the arc goes to 0. It may happen that there are no poles at all, but the arc that goes off to infinity, the arc that recedes away to infinity makes a contribution that can happen. Then again the answer will be wrong. Correct? So, the problem is rather serious. Do you understand now the thing is getting more and more serious. It is not that there is a question of a pole sitting inside the, the contour. Even if there are no poles, you can still get a wrong answer. So, the example is basically what we had t to the power k e to the power minus a, there are no poles, but nevertheless you still had to check that the circular arc makes no contribution. So, whenever you compute an integral using Cauchy integral formula, what happens? You are, you are working with a fu function f of z and you are integrating over a certain contour which consists of several pieces, correct. Some of these arcs will recede away to infinity. Suppose you are integrating along a thin rectangle, it is quite possible that the two vertical sides may go off to 0, may go off to infinity excuse me. And then you have the integral along two parallel lines, that can happen in some examples. Sometimes you have circular, semicircular contour, the semicircle goes off to infinity, all sorts of things can happen. And then there are poles inside the contour. If there are poles inside the contour, then you have to calculate the residue at each of the poles. So, it involves number of things. 
it involves specifying a contour, it involves specifying an analytic function, you have to calculate the you have to calculate the residues at all the poles which are lying inside. Along certain parts of the contour, you will get integrals that you want. Along certain other parts, you may get a value which is a multiple of the integral that you want. That is quite possible, like the arms, right? Integral along L3 was i times capital I. It could be a multiple of the integral that you want, or it could be something else. There are certain parts of the contour which recede away to infinity, and then you have to prove that these things go to 0. Question is that is there a theorem in complex analysis which says that if an arc recedes away to infinity, then the limit will be 0. All the examples you take, many of the take your favorite complex analysis textbook, Churchill and Brown, for instance. Look at all the examples on residue calculus that are worked out. In most of the examples, you will find that limit of gamma r as r tends to infinity is 0. You calculate integrals along uh, horizontal rectangle, uh, rectangles, thin horizontal rectangles, contribution from the vertical side goes to 0, sector contribution from that goes to 0, indentations, indentations sometime contribute, right? when I mean, there is a fractional residue. But indentations are not going to infinity. There is one very famous book wherein the author says that you must show that contribution from the receding arcs go to 0. But that is a false statement. There exist examples where the arc that the, the piece of the contour that goes to infinity is the sole contributor to the integral. There exists such an example. It is rare. It is rare to encounter examples where some arc or some piece of the contour which is going off to infinity and the limit is not 0. There exist, but there are examples. It is difficult to stumble across them. Generally, you will not find them. Books are silent about this point. Books do not talk about it. The one book where I found some information, it is the wrong information. Now, where is this example? Now, I can give you a nice exercise. Look at all the texts on complex analysis, Copson, uh, Churchill, Krasig, you know, uh, in several of the uh, textbooks on complex variables, where you have a large exercise, list of exercises on residue calculus. Take each and every one of them and examine whether there is any situation where the, where, where the, uh, where the arcs receding to infinity make a contribution to the integral or not. It will be a little mean right, to give you this exercise, but let me give you a little hint. Look at our course, look at all the improper integrals that you have encountered in our course. There is one example in the chapter on improper integrals, in the chapter on improper integrals and beta gamma functions. There is one integral which is very interesting and if you try to evaluate the integral by contour integration, you will see that the sole contributor to the value is that piece of the contour which goes to infinity. So, now I narrowed down your search to one chapter, namely the last chapter. One improper integral is there whose value can be easily calculated using complex analysis and where the, the piece going off to infinity actually contributes. So, now you can tell me by the end of the course what it is. No, now that you have raised this question, now we are going to talk about it further. Integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus x square dx, can you calculate it using contour integration?
e to the power minus z square dz, you try it, it's not easy. In fact, up until 1935, it was believed it's not possible. Watson wrote a book, The Cauchy Integral Theorem and Its Consequences, thin book which appeared in the Cambridge Tracts in Mathematics, where in the preface he says that it is not clear whether all real integrals can be computed using complex analysis. He says that integral of e to the power minus x squared dx has not yet been evaluated by contour, by contour integration. Look, if G and Watson, the same Watson of Whittaker and Watson mentions this, it is unlikely that you are going to be able to find it easily, find a proof using complex analysis easily. Mordell obtained this integral via complex analysis in his, in the, when he was trying to compute Gaussian sums. And Remert in his book refers to it as a diabolical evaluation of the Gaussian integral. It was calculated using complex analysis. Uh, a very simple, uh, simplified account of it was given by Mursky in 1976 in an American Mathematical Monthly paper. What he does is, he uses a thin parallelogram to calculate the integral. So, that is not a correct example. Coming back to the question that I asked, it is not the correct example. It is there. So, now I leave it to you to search our list of improper integrals that you have encountered in this course. And one of them the, uh, can be calculated using contours, wherein the sole contributor is, an, uh, is the piece of the contour that goes off to infinity. Computation, see it is a clear like question of computations. I mean, well, there are two issues here. The issue is that complex substitution in real integrals is not allowed. And the reason why this happens is that when it should, it should be done, the correct way to do it is via the Cauchy integral formula. And the contributor, there may be contributions coming from the residues which you miss out when you try to simply blindly do a substitution, uh, complex substitution, that is one point. The other thing that you might think is that if there are no residues present, then there will not be any additional contributions. That is also false because there are examples where the those parts of the contour which recede away to infinity, they end up contributing. So, there are two reasons why the, the complex substitution, the naive method can lead to a wrong result. That is a summary. Okay. Shall we proceed? Now, let us come to something which is less exotic. Oh, you want me to tell you the secret? it is difficult to predict. There is no clear, uh, by looking, by staring at the integral, you cannot tell. Strange things happen. And I think it would be an interesting exercise for you to look at the list of improper integrals that we have looked at and first locate that example. I think that will tell you a great deal, right? All right. Now, let us come to the shift theorems. 
Suppose that Laplace transform of f is capital F, then Laplace transform of e to the power a t f of t is f capital F of s minus a. This is pretty obvious. You simply look at the integral of the left hand side and you get it. There is nothing, there is nothing funny going on here. I am going to here assume that a is real, no question. So, this first formula is completely obvious and we are not going to spend any time in trying to derive it. So, for example, Laplace transform of cos B t is what? S upon S squared plus B squared. Therefore, Laplace transform of e to the power A t cos B t is what? S minus A upon S minus A the whole squared plus B squared. There is an illustration of that shifting theorem, correct? Next formula is that let capital H t denote the heavy side unit step function h of t equal to 1 if t is positive, 0 if t is less than or equal to 0. Its value at the origin is not, uh, is not of any consequence at the moment. Then Laplace transform of f of t minus a h of t minus a is e to the power minus a s times the Laplace transform of f. This is the second shift theorem. Let us prove it directly apply the integral def, integral formula right by the laplace transform by definition is integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus st f of t minus a h of t minus a dt now h of t minus a is going to be 0 when t is less than a so the integral will just go from a to infinity Correct. So, it will be an integral from a to infinity e to the power minus s t f of t minus a. And here because, here because t is bigger than a, t minus a is positive. So, f is defined in this range. Okay. So, now this will give you uh, this result when you make a change of variables t minus a equal to u. a is real by the way. So, there is no uh, complex substitution going on here. This is a straightforward business and that is e to the power minus a s Laplace in of f. Absolutely straightforward, nothing fancy, two shift theorems. Please write them down, just the formulas, nothing else. So, that you know we can move on to the next slide. Right. So, as illustration the first, I already given you an illustration of the first one. right? Laplace of cos B t is S upon S squared plus B squared. So, Laplace of e to the power A t cos B t is S minus A upon S minus A the whole squared plus B squared. Further illustrations can be given. Laplace of 1 is 1 over S. Laplace of t is 1 over S squared. So, what is Laplace of e to the power A t? Laplace of 1 is 1 over S. So, Laplace of 1 into e to the power a t is 1 over s minus a. This is quite consistent with what we have done earlier. There are simple trivial illustrations really of and the shift theorem, the first shift theorem is completely trivial. In fact, both are pretty easy. Now, as a second example, I should give you some illustration of the second shift theorem. Rather than look at examples and do it, let us prove a little result. If f of t is periodic of period p, then the Laplace transform of f of t is 1 minus e to the power minus p s times integral 0 to p f of t e to the power minus s t dt. Yeah, how will you prove this theorem? f is periodic of period p. Hmm? Wonderful. Divide the what is the definition of L of f t? L of f t is integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t f of t d t. The range 0 to infinity should be broken up into 0 to p, p to 2 p, 2 p to 3 p, etcetera. And from p to 2 p, you put the uh, you put t minus p equal to u. In 2 p to 3 p, you put t minus 2 p equal to u, etcetera. I will leave it to you to carry out the algebra. I will leave it to you to carry out the algebra and derive the formula. Let us derive it in a slightly different manner. That is a perfectly sound approach. 
Let us, however, do something slightly different and write down. First of all, notice that the Laplace transform of f is what is an integral from 0 to infinity, right. So, Laplace of f is the same as Laplace of f t into h t, because what is h t doing? h t is 1 on the positive real axis, 0 on the negative real axis. So, by multiplying by h t, you are clipping the signal off, correct. So, Laplace of f is Laplace of f into h, trivial observation. Now, let us calculate Laplace of f minus Laplace of f of t minus p h of t minus p, which is Laplace of f t h t minus f of t minus p h of t minus b. But what is the graph of this going to look like? Here it is. On the top one is the graph of f t into h t and the next one is the graph of f of t minus p h of t minus p. It is a periodic function of period p remember. So, when I subtract what is going to happen, this entire piece will disappear and so the difference will be f of t between 0 and p, 0 outside, correct? Is that right? Clear? So, f of t h of t minus f of t minus p h of t minus p is f of t, if 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to p, 0 otherwise. So, the Laplace transform of f of t h of t minus f of t minus p h of t minus p is equal to integral 0 to p, that is only integral uh, interval over which it is not 0, e to the power minus s t f of t d t, correct. But the left hand side is Laplacian of f minus by the second shift theorem e to the power minus p s into Laplace of f, right hand side is the integral 0 to p e to the power minus s t f t d t. Now, divide by 1 minus e to the power p s integral you get in the formula of the Laplace transform for a periodic function. Laplace transform of a periodic function with period with period p, correct. With period p. So, further exercises for you have fun. And after you have written down these exercises, you sure deserve a cup of tea, hmm? only one page. I am being kind to you this time. This time I am being kind, I am breaking up the exercises into little pieces, so that one page at a, at a time. In small morsels, I will slowly shove it into you. like the way a mother gives babies, you know, break the tablet into four pieces and one at a time. So, do not be uh, under the impression that this is the end. This is the first session on Laplace transforms. Tomorrow will be the second session on Laplace transforms. And I have quite a, quite a thick sheaf of papers, all right. So, today is the end of the first session. The second session on Laplace transforms will be from tomorrow.